Welcome everyone to the Symbility self-paced training modules. We've designed our training modules with you the user in mind to take control over your learning experience. You can pause the video at any time to give yourself some hands-on practice. In this module, you're going to learn how to diagram roof plans. So if I look under diagrams, I see I've diagrammed a few floor plans and I have a roof plan selected. But if you don't have a roof plan displayed in there, you can always place your cursor on diagrams, right click, and the second option is add roof plan. When you click on it, you may see something displayed in the background and this depends on how your company is set up and configured. Uh, what I see in here is a superimposed image and that's there to help guide me. If my intent is to line a roof plan up on top of a floor plan, then that image is there to help guide me. I can't change it at all. It's simply there to help me overlay something. Uh, this is something you can choose to turn on or turn off. At this point, I'd like to have it turned off. If I go to the View tab and I click on Superimpose Diagram, you'll get a drop down and you can choose what's displayed. So for example, if you were doing a second floor and wanted it lined up over a first floor, you could choose a floor plan, for example. Here, I'm just gonna click on this to turn it off. Remember, it's a toggle feature, so you could choose to turn it on or off, on or off. So we're in a roof plan, and uh, if I go to the Home tab, I can start diagramming. Now remember, the Home tab is your menu, and because I'm in a roof plan now, it will look a little different. Earlier in the other module, we saw that the Home tab was showing us all the tools and options related to diagramming floor plans. Well, now that I'm in a roof plan, I see some different shapes and tools. So let's take a look through this Home ribbon. Right off the bat in here, I see reset view and f all these different rotate options. We've got pan, freeform rotate, horizontal rotate, vertical rotate. We'll use these once we have a, a roof diagrammed and this will give us a 3D perspective. So we'll circle back to these tools in a little bit. Then I've got the zoom options. These function just as they did in diagramming floor plans. So you've got zoom in, zoom out, zoom 100% and zoom to fit. Those kind of act as those two extremes you can hop back and forth between but they function just as they did with floor plans. And then we've got kind of our library of default shapes, but you'll notice there are a lot more shapes to choose from when you're working with roof plans. Uh, what's important when you're working with roof plans, the very first step really is to identify your core main shape. So what is that biggest piece of the roof? What is that main piece that everything else is kind of built off of? So when you're choosing your shape in here, it's really important to make sure you're starting with the correct core shape. Now notice when I place my cursor on it, that little hover text pops open to identify it. So we saw that this is the gable, and that's a gable dormer versus a Dutch gable and a Dutch gable dormer. There's our hip and our hip dormer, etc. So it's really important to make sure you identify that core shape. If you're not sure what it is, use that hover text. So there's a lot of different shapes to choose from in here. Depending on your screen resolution, these may be displayed in one long row like I'm seeing here. If they're not, you'll have these little arrows that will allow you to scroll through your window and look at all the different shapes that are available. I'm gonna start with just a simple gable. So I'm gonna click on it and I'll come into the canvas and I click and it drops that shape in there. Now, it may feel a little small, so I'm gonna hit zoom to fit. Zoom to fit zooms in on it nice and big and kind of centers it for me. So let's take a look at some of the dimensions that we see. Um, up here I see this eave length, 16 feet. I see the ridge line displayed in here. On the slope I see my pitch, the defaults coming in at 612. And directly underneath it I see that rafter length displayed. Over here I see the gable width. And then down here in the corner I see this little H is representing the gable height and the E is the elevation from the ground up. Now, you won't need to change everything. I'll share with you what dimensions will be important for you to, to be setting. First, let's take a look at, though, how to change our dimensions. So, when we were diagramming floor plans, you saw these little square handles. We know that the little white squares are sizing handles. They help us make something larger or smaller. So, I could use those, right? I could also click on a dimension and I could use the arrows, or I could type something in. Let's say I wanted this, this is a big roof, maybe I'll make this, um, you know, let's say I'll make it 30 feet. If this gets really big and kind of cuts off the screen, uh, I'll hit zoom to fit to kind of recenter everything for me. 
So we're seeing different ways we can adjust our dimensions. I could click here on the pitch and I could make this a 312 pitch and here's a little time saver. If I type in three, I don't have to spend my time typing over 12. The system knows a pitch is over 12, so if I type in three and hit enter, that locks it in there at a 312 pitch. Likewise, I could come in and I could use the arrows to make that adjustment as well. When you're adjusting your rafter length, just make sure you're being precise with your mouse because the rafter length is located very closely to the pitch. So make sure you click on the rafter length and again, you can use the arrows, you could type something in. If it gets real big on you like this, once again, I'll hit zoom to fit to recenter everything. I've got this little square handle right in here. Uh, and so what that would actually do, notice what I'm seeing in here, I see my pitch and my rafter length, and they're only displayed on one slope. Nothing's displayed over here. And that's because they're equal, right? The pitch is the same on both slopes, so is the rafter length. If I take this, this little square handle right on the ridge line, and I shift this over, do you see this is allowing me to work with unequal rafter lengths or different pitches? Um, I'm just gonna go up here to my undo button and undo that so I'm kind of back at my standard view. There's one other way you could work with unequal rafter lengths, and there's actually a button right up here that says unequal rafters. And what that would do, when I turn it on, it displays that pitch and that rafter length on both sides, and I could come in here and I could make adjustments that way. Once again, if I want to undo something, I've got undo up here. And unequal rafter lengths, really, it's a toggle feature. So remember we talked about uh, a toggle feature is something that you click on it once to turn it on, click on it a second time, it turns it off. So I'm kind of back at my standard view, but we've seen there are two different ways I could really work with unequal rafter lengths. Um, down here, this height and the elevation. The height is really not something you'll have to change ever. If you focus on your pitch and your eave length and your rafter length, you won't have to be changing that so much. The elevation, however, is something you'll want to change. So I could click on this. If this was going to be a two-story house, for example, I could type in 18. Now it's an 18 feet elevation from the ground up. Uh, and so you could make those changes. Now, the elevation, that little E down there, sometimes can get, uh, can get a little small. It can be hard to click on it. If you're diagramming a more complicated roof, the more shapes you're connecting, sometimes that E gets a little lost. Well, a common trend throughout Symbility, there's more than one way to do something. So another way I could change the elevation, if I place my cursor on this roof shape and I right click, there's properties right up here. If I go to properties, another window will pop open and now I see elevation right in here. So I could always come in here and change the elevation this way. Maybe I'll make it 10 feet. Another thing you can do from your roof shape properties is adjust your soffit width. So notice in here, it says tap a soffit area to select it. There's also a button that says select all. So I'll click on select all and notice all of the soffits are selected here and the defaults coming in at two feet. So I'm gonna leave it at a two foot soffit width, but again, this is where you could come in and adjust it. Notice you can also choose to make something um, non-symmetrical. Non so if I deselect this, you could say, oh, well, only these soffit widths are gonna be adjusted. So it's up to you how you're adjusting it, but again, this is where you can ch make those changes. When I hit okay, that will save any change that I've made. One other thing I'd like you to be aware of is this guy right here. Okay, this little handle. Now we've talked about square handles and we know that they help us make something larger or smaller if you wanted to adjust your size of something. A circular handle performs a different action. A circular handle will actually manipulate the shape, okay? And I stress this to you because a lot of times people come here and they, they grab this one thinking, oh, it's just gonna make this shape exactly the way it looks longer if I wanted to kind of stretch it out this way. So for example, if my intent was to do something like this, right? But if I accidentally grab this instead of this, there'll be a big difference. So let's see what this guy does. If I take this, and I pull it out, I actually just manipulated that shape. I changed this gable into a gable dormer. If I had gone the other way, I just changed it into a hip. Really, all these shapes are variations of each other, 
And, uh, you know, we're sharing this with you so that you can be intentional in, in what you're doing, okay? You should always be intentional on how you're using your mouse and what's happening on your screen. So if your intent is to make something larger or smaller, you'll want to make sure you're grabbing that sizing handle and not that circular shape. If for some reason, oh, you meant to grab a gable dormer, um, you know, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this. Personally, I would probably just delete this shape come back and grab the correct one, okay? But again, it's important to be aware of those things and what these different symbols are gonna do for us. I'm gonna hit zoom to fit, get myself recentered in here. All right, so we've talked about kind of how to change our dimensions, what different symbols to be aware of in here. Uh, but let's talk about the order, okay? There's an order, a recommended order for how you adjust your dimensions, okay? If you follow this order to get your core shape set correctly, you'll kind of be off to a good start and you can start adding all your dormers and other pieces of your roof. So the order should go like this. Follow per pitch, eave length, rafter length. Okay, so you always wanna start by checking your pitch. So you can come in and change your pitch. I like this 612 right here. I'm gonna keep it at a 612 pitch, but if you needed to change it, if it was a 512 pitch or a 312 pitch, anything like that, you always start by changing your pitch first. Pitch, then eave length. So I would go to this longest eave length up here and then rafter length. So I'm gonna follow that order. So pitch is good, 612. Eave length, we're gonna make this really long. Rafter length, I'm gonna set this to 14 feet. Now it got real big on my screen and that's okay. I'm gonna hit zoom to fit to recenter it for myself. So pitch, eave length, rafter length. There's a little bit of gray area in there that we experience sometimes and that comes in in the term of elevation. Whether you set that before or after kind of depends on the situation and can be up to you. But again, if you follow that per pitch, eave length, rafter length for your core shape, That'll make sure you're getting off to the right start and get your core shape set correctly. Um, at this point, I wanna start adding some other shapes to this. So the first thing I wanna do, if I'm gonna kinda make a, a more complicated roof and I, I'm gonna start adding some other shapes, I wanna take a look at my ridge line and make sure this is running correctly, okay? So this is running right now horizontally, but in the example I wanna show you right now, I actually wanna work with a vertical ridge line. So I want you to watch for something. Um, when I click on this roof shape, my ribbon across the top changes. If I click on the canvas, it also changes again. What's happening here? Remember the ribbon is dynamic and will change depending upon what's selected. So when I select my roof shape, it takes me to a roof tab. And in here I see all the tools related to working with this roof shape, okay? So this is where I see things like mirror, flip, and rotate. If I hit rotate 90 degrees, it's gonna rotate this shape. So now I see a vertical, running ridge line. If I click in the canvas, it takes me back to my home tab. So really this is kind of a fast way to hop back and forth between your room menu and your home menu. If you've watched the module about diagramming floor plans, you saw a very similar relationship between clicking on a, on a, on a sh room shape and clicking on the canvas. Same thing allows you to hop back and forth between a room menu and the home menu. So here I am, I've got my core gable shape set correctly. Remember the first step in diagramming a roof plan successfully here in Mobile Claims is to choose your correct shape, your core shape, and get it set correctly by following per, pitch, eave length, rafter length. Elevation, again, a little bit of a gray area. I could come in and change this if I wanted to. But again, I've got my core shape set correctly. Now I'm ready to add maybe a gable dormer. So I'm just gonna move this over here a little bit so I have enough space and I'm in my home tab, I see all these different shapes I can choose, and I'm gonna come in here and make sure I'm selecting the gable dormer. I click on it, and I'll come into the canvas, and I'll click off to the side here. So if you're just getting started in mobile claims, I recommend kind of approaching this as two different shapes. So I have one off to the side, when I'm ready to draw the next one, I come over here and I keep them separate for, the, for right now. So I've got my gable dormer, and really what I wanna make a change, I'm gonna make this width a little smaller. I'm gonna make it three feet. And I've adjusted my dormer and I'm gonna now attach it. So remember before we talked about different symbols, okay? Different symbols will perform different actions. If I place my cursor on that little white square, that would allow me to change the size of it. 
My intent right now is not to change the size. My intent is to change the location. This symbol right here, the crosshair with an arrow on each tip, that will allow me to move this shape to a new spot, okay? It's retaining the size. It's simply allowing me to move it to a new location. So I'm gonna take this and notice I can push it kind of as far up on that slope if I want. I wanna kind of line it up right here. When I let go, it drops it on that slope. Now, if you needed to move it over again, you can. You're not stuck in this one place. You can always kind of adjust it wherever you want it to be. So I get it lined up and notice these bold lines right in here. That's a visual indicator that this dormer is flush against this slope. So it's looking good to me. Um, what if I have a similar dormer, the same dormer over here? Am I gonna go back to the home tab, look through the default shapes, choose the dormer, drop it on the canvas and resize it and then connect it? That's a lot of extra work, okay? What you can do is if this is the same dormer that I just drew, I can simply select it, copy it up here in my ribbon and paste. The system can't read my mind. It's not gonna know where I want it located. So it's just gonna paste it right on the canvas. And now I can come grab it. I can relocate it, get it lined up. Uh, and there I've got my roof diagrammed, okay? And so if you're doing something like this, again, remember to start your, start your process with your core shape and then add your dormers. And if your dormers are similar, again, you can copy and paste. At this point, once I diagram a roof, I always like to go back to the home tab. So remember, clicking on the canvas is a little shortcut. It takes me back to my home tab. Once you diagram a roof, it's always a good idea to come in here, right to your home ribbon, and freeform rotate it. Now, we have other ways to rotate. We've got pan, freeform rotate, horizontal rotate, and vertical rotate. My favorite, my recommendation for you guys is freeform rotate, and that's because it's all these other ones combined into one. What this is going to allow me to do is rotate it so I get a 3D perspective, and it's a nice way to kind of check your work and see how everything's coming together. So I'm gonna click on freeform rotate, it's a toggle feature. So notice the orange highlight means it's currently turned on. When I bring my cursor into the canvas, I see a large hand, okay? The large hand, once I see that I can hold my click down and I can start to move my mouse, and you can see I can kind of rotate this up. And if you need to adjust your canvas view, you can move things around so it's nice and centered. And again, this is just a nice way to kind of see it from a different perspective because really looking at a roof is different when you're looking at it when you're up on the roof it looks different than when you're looking at it on the ground and it looks different than when you're looking at it in the system and so it's a nice way to kind of look at it from a different perspective and you can kind of catch some mistakes here if something's not looking right that's okay look at it from this perspective see that something's off and then you can go ahead and fix it so again it's okay to make a mistake what's important is that we catch it along the way when you're done freeform rotating, it's really important that you do this next step, guys. You have to come back and click Reset View. Reset View takes you back to kind of your bird's eye view. If you don't reset your view and you continue working in your roof plans, the next shape you bring in will kind of come in kind of wonky because you're already in your, your freeformed view and things will look a little weird. So make sure you reset your view to take you back to this point, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the lasso tool to delete this shape. So I have a fresh canvas that I can continue diagramming and showing you guys some other tools that are out there. So the lasso tool works like this. If I place my cursor in the canvas and I hold my click down, that fine line that appears is my lasso. Whatever my lasso touches becomes selected. So now that these are all selected, I can hit delete on my keyboard or I could use the ribbon and now I'm at an empty clean canvas. Um, let me start again with the gable because there are a few other things I'd like to show you. I want you to notice this dimension right here. Okay, maybe I'll make this a little bigger, 20 feet. I want you to watch this dimension. Okay, I'm going to go to the view tab and there's an option in here that says ignore soffits for all horizontal dimensions. It has a check mark. When I deselect this, pay close attention to what's happening right in here. I just lost four feet of that dimension. See that change? It goes from 20 feet to 16 feet. What's happening is, well, this option says ignore soffits for all horizontal dimensions. My soffit width, the default soffit width, 
is two feet. So when it's ignoring it, look where this, what this is measuring. This is measuring this full eave length from corner to corner, right? When I turn this off and it's ignoring that soffit width, two feet on both sides, I'm losing four feet because what's being measured is the footprint of the house. So really, there are two different ways you could be diagramming here. And it all depends on where you're getting your dimensions. If you're on the roof and you're measuring that entire eave length, you will diagram like this. If, however, you're dealing with a roof that's too steep, you're not gonna get up there, you're measuring from the ground. What you can do is, if you know the pitch of that roof and you measure the footprint of the house, you can still diagram here. And you'll wanna make sure that you deselect that this way. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and reselect it for all of our other examples. But again, just be aware that there really are two different ways you could be approaching your roof plan. You could be diagramming from the roof or from the ground with the footprint of the house. All right, so we're looking at the home menu right now, and I wanna go through an example of working with a hip for you. So I'll come into the library of default shapes up here, and I'll use the hover text to identify the hip. I click on it, I come into the canvas and I click, and it drops that shape in there. And if it feels a little small, remember you've got your zoom options. I like zoom to fit, to zoom in nice and big on that. And I'm gonna follow per, pitch, eave length, rafter length. So my pitch looks good, I like it at a 612 pitch. Uh, my eave length, I'm gonna go ahead and make that a lot longer. And then the rafter length. Once again, it got real big on my screen, so zoom to fit will recenter it for me. At this point though, I wanna make sure I'm working with a vertical running ridge line. So if I click on it, it takes me to the roof tab. Remember, if you click on the roof shape, it takes you to a roof menu in your ribbon and I've got mirror flip, rotate 90 degrees. I'll use rotate 90 degrees to get that running vertically. So I like the way this is set up, but I actually wanna zoom out a little bit because I wanna have some space where I can add a dormer here and I wanna add a dormer here. So I'm just gonna zoom out a bit. Lined up, that looks good to me. Okay, so if I go back to the home tab, remember clicking in the canvas is a little shortcut, if I go back to the Home tab, I can select my hip dormer, and I'll come into the canvas and I'll click. And uh, I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit, maybe make that 10 feet. So I've got my core shape is a hip, and I've got a hip dormer, and I wanna connect them. So the way to connect a hip dormer is this. I want you to watch for this back line of the hip dormer it should be overlapping with this line of the hip. That's something to aim for. Another thing to aim for is you can aim for this little corner right here, that little square handle, to touch this corner and things should snap into place correctly. If you watched the, the, the module for diagramming floor plans, it should feel a little reminiscent of the way we talked about getting a, a cabinet lined up in the corner and you're looking for those lines to overlap. So a similar kind of feel to something you may have seen in the diagramming floor plans module. So to connect them, you look for this crosshair with an arrow on each tip and you hold your click down and you start to move your mouse. And I'm actually going to connect it incorrectly so I can show you guys a common mistake and you'll know what to watch for and what to avoid. So a lot of times people come in and they do this. They connect it, uh, and this is incorrect. And I actually see two visual indicators telling me this is not lined up correctly. One is this. Remember we talked about those lines should be overlapping. Well, do you see that this line does not overlap with this line? It's gone past it. So you've surpassed the point that you should have been lining it up with, okay? Another, another way I can tell is this. This dimension in here and this dimension right here, they're broken into two pieces. What we're looking for is one nice, long, contiguous dimension. So I can pull this apart and I'll, again, I'm aiming for this to overlap with this and you can aim for that little corner to touch that corner and the system wants to snap it into place correctly. So when I do that, it snaps into place and do you see that, what that overlap looks like and that continuous dimension in there? Let me do it incorrectly one more time, and I wanna show you guys something, okay? So with my example with the gable, I showed you how to go to freeform rotate. So I'm gonna go freeform rotate this, and I want you to see how freeform rotate is actually a way where you may catch a mistake. 
So when I freeform rotate this, do you see that something doesn't look quite right in here? Right? This is not lined up the way I was intending it to be lined up. And so you catch a mistake here like this in freeform rotate, that's okay. What you'll do is you'll hit reset view. I come in here, I pull this off to the side, and I give it another try. This time it's lined up correctly. And you'll see when I go to freeform rotate, this looks good. All right, so let me zoom out a bit because I want to have a little space where I can add another dormer right in here. Okay, well, I can copy and paste this dormer that I already drew. And maybe I'll rotate that so its ridge line is running the same way as the core shape in there. And then I'll go ahead and connect that. Something I'd like you guys to notice though, I want you to watch this dimension in here. Okay, 40 feet. The 40 feet is a combined dimension of both shapes. So when you're diagramming a roof plan, you almost need to look at it as different pieces of a puzzle that you're putting together to make one complete piece. Because right now this is 30 feet. If I made this 40 feet, if I clicked on that and made it 40 feet, when I connect this shape, it's no longer gonna be 40 feet, okay? So again, you need to look at things as different pieces. And then when you're all done, you see this combined shape with combined dimensions running along the exterior. So that's an example with our, with our hip. I'm going to go ahead and lasso this and delete it. So I've got an empty canvas. I can show you another example. Um, so we've worked with gables. We've worked with hips. Um, I'm going to work with some different shapes, maybe a, a hip and a shed, for example. And I'm also gonna take a look at working with multiple elevations. So let me start with this guy in here and selecting my hip. I'll come in here and I'll click. And once again, I'm gonna get it set up. So pitch, eave length, rafter length. Pitch, 612 looks good. Eave length, we'll go ahead and increase that. And same thing with our rafter length. And I'm gonna rotate this, so I'm getting myself kinda set up to, to work. Actually, I'm going to keep it at the normal orientation that we saw it at. So um, we've got our pitch set up. We've got our eave length set up. We've got our rafter length set up. So my core shape is set correctly. Um, if I go back to the home tab, I want to work with a, a shed roof, okay? So a shed roof, there are two things in here that look like they might be a shed. And if you use your hover text, you'll be able to identify the shed versus a flat roof. So this guy is a flat roof. This guy is the shed roof. And they're very similar. The difference is a pitch. The shed has a pitch. The flat roof does not. So I'm looking to work with a, with a shed. So I'll come in here. And I'll select the shed roof. And I'm going to go into the canvas and click. So there's my shed roof. Okay. Um, I'm going to change the pitch. Up until now, I haven't been kind of leaving the 612 default pitch, but I'll go ahead and change this to a, a 312 pitch. Remember, I type in three. I don't have to waste my time typing in over 12. The system knows it goes over 12. There's my 312 pitch. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to connect this. I'm going to push it in till I see it's connected to that soffit line in there. And I actually just made a, a real big mistake. I made a mistake, and you'll see very clearly what my mistake was when I freeform rotate this. Do you see when I rotate this, the slope of this shed is pointing the wrong way. If this rains, if it rains, this house is not going to do so good. Okay, so that's a pretty big mistake that I just made. Let me reset the view and show you how you can catch a mistake like that. I'm just going to pull it apart, and I want you to notice right up here this little arrow. See that arrow pointing there? That's always going to point to the upslope. So in this case, I need that upslope to be pointing towards the main structure. So I'll select that shed roof. I'll come in here and I'll hit flip, and now that that uh, that upslope is pointing in the right direction. The other thing I'd like you to be aware of is. Um, the elevation. So let's take a look at this. Let's say we're working with multiple elevations and my core shape, so that hip, let's say it's a two-story house. So I'll come in here, I'll click on that E, and I'm going to make it 18 feet. We're dealing with a two-story house, but let's say there's a storage room on the first floor, and so there's nothing above it on the second floor. 
but we need to account for that in our roof plan. So the elevation of my shed roof, let's make that nine feet. So we're working with multiple elevations. As I connect this, I want you to watch this dimension right here. Okay, so this right here is my rake edge, 12 feet, four inches. When I connect this, I push it in, why did it become 10 feet all of a sudden? Uh, it didn't change. My rake edge is still 12 feet, four inches. What changed is what dimension the system's showing me, okay? If I rotate this, I go to freeform rotate, you'll actually see that, oh, well that 10's not representing the rake edge, that 10 is representing this exterior with that overhang in there. See that rake edge is still 12 feet four? Um, so just kind of be prepared that sometimes, you know, what the system is showing you changes. It's because as you connect shapes together, there are new relationships between shapes and exteriors. So be prepared for that. And you know, freeform rotating, again, is always a good idea because you're looking at it from another perspective. It'll help you get a better sense of what you're creating. One thing I'd like you to be aware of is, is this, okay? So on my shed, I changed my pitch. So I'd like you to watch for something. When I come in here, if I go grab a new shape and I click, notice it's coming in at a 312 pitch. So when you change a pitch, it ret the system retains that change. It's very similar if you saw in the diagramming floor plans module, when you change your ceiling height, the system retains that change. So just something to be aware of in there. All right, so, so far we've seen how to diagram kind of a freestanding roof. Um, what about a scenario like this? What if you've diagrammed a first floor or a second floor and now you wanna snap a roof plan right on top of it? We can do that. So let me just delete this. I'll lasso this guy and delete it so I'm at an empty space on my canvas. The way we'll do this, you know, snapping a roof on top of a floor plan is we need a superimposed image in the background. So what we can do is I go to the View tab. In the View tab, there's a superimposed diagram option. Remember when we first added our roof plan today? We saw a superimposed image in the background and I turned it off. It's something that you can turn on or off depending on your need. So at this point, I need to turn it on. And I actually want to superimpose floor plan two. Remember I've got multiple floor plans in here. I'm going to use that floor plan two. So that was that kind of basic floor plan that I did in the diagramming floor plans module. Well here, it's superimposed in the background. I can't make any changes to it. It's simply there so I can view it and it's there to help guide me. If I go back to my home tab and I choose, uh, you know, Gable Dorm or Gable, for example, and I come in here, um, I can click. It's gonna drop the roof right on the canvas. As I move this around, do you see that I have that red line up here? The red line's important. It's a visual indicator that your roof plan is snapped on top of your floor plan. Now I know there are, there are a lot of lines happening in here. It might be hard to kind of keep track of what you're actually supposed to be lining up. Well, notice that there's an overhang. You're not looking at that exterior line. That's representing the overhang. We're looking at that interior line and that's what we're seeing is that nice bold red line. So really I'm choosing one corner kind of as my anchor point and I saw that red line. So I let go. Now I'm gonna come up here to this symbol right here, that little square handle. Remember this circular handle will change the, the shape. It manipulates the shape, not the size. So make sure you're choosing a sizing handle. Remember it's always important to be intentional in what you're doing with your mouse and how things are happening on your screen. So I'm just gonna stretch this out here. I'm just going side by side till I see that red all the way around, okay? Uh, and that, again, that red bold line is my visual indicator that things are snapped and lined up correctly. Of course, at this point, I could go ahead and start adding dormers if I wanted to, et cetera. But that, that superimposed image is a really great tool because it allows us to uh, snap something into place. So you've got superimposed if you're working with a floor plan and a roof plan that goes on top of it. Thanks for joining us as we learned how to diagram roof plans. Make sure you check out the next training module as we learn how to diagram exterior plans.